feel like fucking shit because I just popped a tire and then saw a roach at the place I was eating. However, I gotta talk about how you need to stop fucking underrating Kare Kano. Kare Kano is the best fucking rom-com ever set to animation. Now, I saw this, uh, this thing that Zen Huxtable was tweeting about, an Anime News Network article about six shoujo anime that should be readapted, which I didn't really understand the conceit of because a lot of them were shows that were already good and don't need to be redone, such as Kare Kano. Now, the way this article frames the show, they literally describe it as like watching a train wreck in slow motion because the show falls apart, as they say. Well, this is not really what happens. And I understand why, as a first-time viewer, you would be really let down with the last stretch of Kare Kano. I was as well when I watched the show for the first time. But when I returned to it years later, I found that, first of all, nothing else even touches the first 18 episodes of Kare Kano. It is just so insanely good. It's that the, the characters are so much deeper and better written and their relationship is so much more interesting than most of what you're ever going to see out of anime rom-coms. I mean, if you've ever seen my video, Six Things I Want from Anime Romance, the whole point of that video was that Kare Kano checks every box, that it does everything right that you would want from a story like this. It also has the most interesting visual direction. I mean, Hideaki Anno pulling out all the stops, doing what, in my opinion, is probably his best directing job ever on that show. It looks incredible, it feels incredible, the characters are incredible, it's super memorable. I can't imagine a more enjoyable experience watching a rom-com show. The only problem with the show is that its final stretch isn't as great as what came before. But it's not even bad. The only thing that really makes it kind of a letdown is that it is so inconclusive because it, it slows down a whole lot and it's leading into an arc that it never quite gets to, which is the problem. It starts setting up new things for this next arc, but it never makes it to that arc, so it ends up feeling like kind of a waste of time at the end. However, in this stretch of episodes, you also have things like episode 19, the one directed by Hiroyuki Imaishi, which uses these really inventive and fun visual techniques. It's a really interesting episode. It's a, a ton of fun to watch. I would definitely think the world would be lesser without this episode's existence. There's also the episode that focuses on the little sister characters, which is basically a unique side story that's entertaining in its own right. So there's really only six episodes of this setup to an arc that doesn't really pay off, and again, they're not even bad. It just feels like you're watching the show at a third speed from what it used to be, which is disappointing as compared to what came before. But moreover, episode 18 is a good enough stopping point for the show. Had it actually ended there, I don't think most people would be disappointed, because it ends at a point where the main characters are completely affirmed in their relationship. Um, you know, episode 18 is where, spoiler alert, uh, if you haven't seen the show, you should go watch it, because, I mean, that's the point of this video, is to make sure that people don't labor under the impression that Kare Kano is somehow not worth watching because of its last stretch of episodes. It's absolutely worth watching because there is nothing else that comes even close to being as good as those first 18, regardless of the disappointing finale, you know? But nonetheless, in episode 18, the characters have sex for the first time. And the way that this episode is portrayed is like a... It's like this is the most, like, everything that has been a problem in their relationship, anything they were trying to work through, has kind of been put behind them at this moment. And there's... There's still a little bit more that, you know, is going to be explored in this coming arc, and again, the fact that the show just kind of ends without resolving the new conflicts it's brought up is disappointing, but if you thought of episode 18 as the finale, I don't think you'd be let down with the show. Now, going forward from that point, if you just think of this as what it is, as like we're entering an arc that's not going to be concluded, again, the story itself isn't bad. It's not as though it suddenly ruins all the characters or that it, you know, goes in a direction you wouldn't want the show to go in. It just is unresolved after that point, you know? So I, I'm just sick of people acting like Kare Kano just completely falls apart or that it's, you know, this huge disappointment. It's still the best rom-com I've ever seen, regardless of those 
episodes that are just not as good as the ones that came before. And the idea that it would be better to be readapted is asinine to me because the entire thing that made it great was Hideki Anno's directing. If you go read the original manga, you are not going to feel the same way about it. Yes, it continues for a lot longer after the anime ends, but there's a lot of people who've gone and read the manga and just said that either it didn't have the same spark for them or they didn't really like the way that it concludes. They don't like the way the story goes beyond that point. They prefer the things that Anno had done to it to make it different, you know? And so I don't think that readapting it would necessarily give us a better show. Same how I feel about some of the other shows that were on the list, such as Kodocha, which it almost sounded like they were arguing against the idea of readapting it when they described it. Like, like the things they were worried about changing. And I'm like, well, if you're worried about them changing it, why do they need to readapt it? Why does Onisama A need a new adaptation? It's like considered a classic by a lot of people. It's a, it's an Osamu Dezaki show. Who the fuck is gonna fill those shoes? Like, it looks incredible. Why would you wanna redo it? I, I understand if the purpose of this list was just to recommend people, like, good shoujo anime, but, like, to frame Karekano like it's watching a train wreck in slow motion is definitely not going to inspire people to watch what is, in my estimation, the best anime rom-com of all time.